Hi, I'm Paul Beckwith. I'm with the uh, Laboratory for Paleoclimatology at the University of Ottawa. Didn't have a chance to uh, shave today or the last few days. I've been out in the bush on an island in the middle of a lake, uh, clearing some brush, doing uh, some deck repairs, foundation repairs, moving, moving retaining walls, etc. A lot, of, a lot of heavy labor. A lot of fresh air, a lot of mosquitoes. What, uh, what, what do we really mean by too late? You know, I'm hearing a lot of this uh, gloom and despair in the climate change community, in the public. You know, people saying it's too late. It's too late to do anything on climate change. You know, we blew it. We had our chance to act 30 or 40 years ago, and we've left it too late. Even Obama did a video and he said climate change is a problem with a defined timeline. You know, if you wait too long, then it's too late and you can't do anything. So I'm going to try to sort of dissect that term that we, we hear all the time. You know, first of all, is it too late to do anything? What, what does being too late mean? You know, too late for the entire planet to do anything? Too late for people in Bangladesh that are only about a foot above sea level. Too late for cities that happen to be in a geographical region where the jet streams become very wavy and dump uh, torrential rainfall onto them repeatedly. You know, one in a thousand year events every few years where, where it floods out the city or it floods out the croplands. You know, too late to actually have methane release in large quantity from the Arctic, com completely uh, raising the temperature of the entire planet um, in the space of a year or less. You know, five or six degrees Celsius as compared to the 1.5 degrees Celsius target from the Paris Agreement. You know, the um, working target, you know, replacing the two degree Celsius target. You know, we've already had entire months over those temperature thresholds. Right now, if you live in the middle of the U.S., uh, we're talking about 50 degrees Celsius uh, heat domes and heat waves. Well, you know, do, I mean, does this matter? Like, well, it's in the U.S. now. It's affecting people, you know, wealthy people. It's affecting people, you know, large numbers of people, but nowhere near as, as it's, it's not affecting as many people as it did in India when it was happening a, a few weeks ago in, in these, these heat waves in India that reached 52 degrees Celsius, you know, approaching the, that, that um, magical, if you like, or, you know, deathly uh, 35 degrees Celsius wet bulb temperature when the body's no longer able to sweat to remove heat from your body. So if you go outside, your core body temperature rises if you're outside. And, uh, you know, even if you're sitting in the shade and there's a, you know, a hurricane force wind, it's not enough to cool you down. Your body, your core temperature rises, uh, you get heat stroke, heat, heat exhaustion leading to heat stroke, your organs start shutting down. Just can't live in those uh, situations unless you you know, have some water-cooled suit or you're in an air-conditioned air environment. So, you know, we have to work on our, the way we describe the climate system abrupt changes that are occurring. You know, too late is a catch-all phrase, um, and we really need to kind of define what we mean. Yes, it's too late for many people in the world to be severely affected, moved from their areas of where they live, you know, pushed out of their communities by, uh, you know, some massive heat wave, think of Syria, um, torrential rainfall events, um, failure of cropland, you know, it's too, it, it, you know, when we talk about too late, we have to talk about who is too late for, and people are making this big, huge stretch that because it's too late for people in a particular city at a particular time, uh, that it's too late for the entire planet. And I just don't buy that. Um, I've been advocating, educating people on climate change for a long time. I think we're going through abrupt climate change. 
I think we have an emergency situation on our hands and the better politicians, the better the one percenters and the power structures of the world recognize this, the, and the, but are they going to do anything about it? I mean, are we going to have to have like some complete revolution in society? Um, you know, similar to revolutions in the past. I mean, this is what people are arguing is happening with Bernie Sanders. You know, uh, apparently he lost. There's a lot of questions about irregularities with elections counting. You know, the mainstream media covered Clinton on, at a rate of three to one times that of Sanders. Everywhere Sanders went, he had massive rallies with filling football stadiums and wherever Clinton went she had hand you know a couple hundred people Sanders had thousands and thousands of people 50,000 100,000 people however large the venue was he filled it this this is what a, a revolution is um, you know I really hope uh, you know I really hope that he stays in as long as he can and that it appears that that's what he's doing he understands climate change I don't hear the same sort of um, talk coming from Clinton and Trump, uh, Trump is a is a climate denier. Well, he is today. You know, a few years ago, he signed this letter urging that we deal with climate change. It was a big threat to to society. So, you know, who the hell knows what Trump is doing? I mean, the guy's just a reality star joke. And this is an indication of you know how dire the situation is overall in our society. When you get clowns like uh, Trump rising to, you know, inciting hatred, rising up, like, you know, you just kind of like, okay, well, society is really starting to break down. Are we going to just uh, sit by and continue to have this stuff happen? Or are we going to actually take strong action and say, we have a emergency on our hands with climate change. It will affect people's behaviors, it makes people, you know, it's a very highly nonlinear process and it will make people very highly nonlinear, like the Trump and so on. And uh, we need rationality to reign now more than ever to deal with these climate change crises. So on the one hand, you have people that are complete climate deniers, like there's an enormous spectrum. It's like going from microwaves on the one side to cosmic rays on the other side. You have this spectrum of, you have this, you know, group of people that are complete climate deniers and up until now they get funded very generously by fossil fuel and oil companies to, to spread their nonsense to, in order to sustain the business model of these, of these same oil companies. Right? On the other hand, you have people that are saying it's way, it's too late. Humanity's finished. We're all going to go extinct in 15 years. With the, you know, with, under what mechanism are 7.4 billion people going to go extinct? You know, if we had a bolide coming from space, 10 mile wide, you know, taking, take frying, you know, coming and landing in the central U.S., for example, you know, flattening trees, incinerating forests around the world, spreading dust everywhere, wiping out crops for 10 years or something. Yeah, that would do a real number on people. But, you know, I, will it cause the entire... I, I think it's a real stretch to say that... It's, it's a real stretch to say that humanity is going to go extinct. I think, I think this is a, a very sort of mislead... I, you know, th this is sort of counterproductive because people hear this, oh, climate change is not a problem, to, oh, climate change uh, doesn't even exist, to, well, climate change is so bad that it's going to kill the entire human race in 15 years. And, you know, people just kind of like, with that kind of range, people just kind of tune out and say, well, you know, what am I, I'm, I'm just going to go to my job and make my money and put food on the table and feed my family and keep my head down and do my work and, you know, see what happens, right? And uh, so, so governments are, you know, I'm sure you've noticed whatever, whatever um, slot you might fit into in, in the spectrum of views on, on climate change that, you know, things are happening. I mean, our forests are not healthy. 
you know, you, you drive down the road and you can see many dead trees, you can see brush, you know, is it more than normal? Well, if you have persistent heat waves in the southwest U.S., for example, when you have a forest burning, then why would you assume that a forest will regrow it in the place that the old forest was? You know, maybe the climate is too dry now, maybe it's too hot, and we can only sustain savanna-like grasslands or even grasslands. Whereas, uh, meanwhile, in the Arctic, as the permafrost is thawing and melting, and we're getting, we have all the organic matter, you know, we're getting shrubs that are growing into small bushes, into trees, and in parts of Siberia, you know, six to eight foot, so three meter, you know, up to three meter high trees appearing in the space of less than a decade where there weren't any trees before in that region. We're getting a mass migration of of uh, the biosphere to the poles. You know, if, you, if you're a particular species and you require, you know, you have certain food requirements, certain temperature tolerance ranges, and now those things are all shifting, then where are you going to go to get at the temperature tolerances that you had before? Not in your region is no good. It's too high now. So you have to move to colder regions. You have to move to the pole. So there's a mass migration of flora and fauna to the to the poles. Uh, so, so where does all this lead? I guess the point I'm trying to make is I don't have all the solutions, but I know that the term saying it is too late for climate change to deal with climate change, or if we don't do something, it's going to be too late in 10 years, or it was too late 50 years ago. Like, what is the point of all of this talk? We have to really think about how to better define the, the issue. We, we, you know, we can't just use this catch-all phrase too late and then argue on one side or the other. We need to, we need better metrics to say, you know, what, is, what what's going to happen? What, what's the sort of the probability of something happening? You know, try to work on better refining our language to actually have it, um, have it actually mean something instead of, you know, endlessly debating you know, is it too late or isn't it too late? You know, what does that actually mean? Um, and also, you know, we really have to work at getting away from this polarized thinking. You know, polarized thinking, black and white thinking, all or nothing thinking, okay? This is what the idea, this, this, is, this, this debate is endlessly proceeding around the, those two words, too late. Okay, people are in the camp saying, it's not too late, we can do loads of stuff too, it's completely too late. You know, there's an, a gray area in between, and you really have to talk about the audience. So, when you're talking about too late, yes, it's probably too late for people that live about a foot above sea level in Bangladesh to have a decent life in the future, because they're going to become climate change migrants. It's probably too late for many cities that are in the middle of the boreal forest, when we get hotter and drier temperatures and we get massive forest fires that obliterate these regions, yes, it's probably too late for, you know, for, for avoiding some of these massive fires. So we need to have better fire breaks. We need to have a much more responsive um, fire system, you know, perhaps use them, have military units that are, that are, you know, have these Hercules transports so that at a moment's notice you can you know, you spot a fire starting on infrared sensors, it's near a town, you can go and put all your resources on stopping it, but, you know, before it actually get threatens the town, for example. I mean, there's loads of things that we can do. I mean, the purpose of this video is not to provide you with all of the solutions, but it is to just, to get you thinking about what, what do you really mean when you say that it's too late for something? Because I would argue, you know, as long as there's humanity on this planet, it's not too late to try to do something to, to A, um, you know, better your life or survive, perhaps. You know, it's not too late to try to survive. Is it ever too late to try to survive? You know, when you stop breathing, I guess that's too late. But until then, you know, uh, it's not too late. So really, you know, think about what you mean by the term. So thank you for your, uh, thanks for your time. Okay, bye for now.